DaVinci Resolve 20 just dropped some insane new AI color grading tools, and they're way more than just hype. In this video, I'm diving into four tools that are already changing how I grade. Color Slice for precision control, Depth Map for adding depth without rotoscoping, AI Magic Mask 2 for faster, smarter isolation, and Chroma Warp for next level color refinement. If you color grade and resolve, you need to see what these tools can do. Just a couple things I wanted to cover before we dive in. First thing is all these tools are not in the free version. Only the color slice is part of the free version. The other ones are a paid to play type situation, but in my opinion, it's way worth it get the paid version the other thing i wanted to mention is not all of these tools were introduced in resolve 20. some of these came in resolve 19 and their version ones we're seeing the version two of those and color slice was in 19 but i just really like it and really started using it way more since upgrading to 20. um and it's just more optimized okay so let's get right into the color grading so for our first tool, we're gonna get right into DaVinci Resolve 20. Um, the first thing we're gonna look at is Color Slice. So Color Slice, it's located, if you come right here, it's gonna be located right here, looks like the um, water droplet and a bunch of dots next to it. And our Color Slice tool is this area right here. And it's super, super powerful. And it's probably the best place to use hue and saturation when you wanna add or subtract saturation. Uh, the algorithm it uses is a much more of a filmic style. So as you know, the color values, the brightness of a color goes up, um, it loses saturation. And as the color goes down or you pull it down um, in brightness, it will gain saturation, which is how colors really work. Primary will is a little bit different, more of a digital way to kind of figure out the different color values when it comes to brightness and saturation. Um, this just looks better. So first off, I'm gonna show you, this is our look that we're gonna try to achieve. So just quickly, our um, footage is, you know, it's shot in S-Log3. So we've got an input space, uh, sgamut.cine, S-Log3, and then it's going to DaVinci Y gamut, and our output gamma is intermediate. So we're gonna grade everything here. Then at the end of our tree, we're going to output that back to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. All right, so for this footage, all we have on it is our primary nodes. And um, currently we have our primary added and then our contrast, and that's all we've got in it. So we're gonna show you how to take this look here with the color slice and get us all the way there color-wise. Uh, so let's do it. So first thing I'm gonna do is just add a parallel node right here, um, just so we can do all of our grading in that. Within the color slice tool, one thing that you wanna know is basically every color value is split up into their own sections. And within this, uh, skin has its own region. It's basically the orangish tones, but everything else, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta all have their own ranges. Within those ranges, you can change the hue. Um, you can also change the saturation right here and add you know, more yellow, or you can change the, um, color depth essentially or the luminance values of that um, color so within this it's really nice you can do a lot of things i'm looking at this shot right here first thing i want to bring the sky back i want more you know punchy colors in the sky so what i'm going to do is immediately take my um cyan up and i'm going to increase my blues all right so that's already getting us to some places uh, the other thing I'd like to do, probably get that blue a little bit more teal. So I'm going to go to the hue right here, and I'm just going to move that over towards teal. And what that does is start to um, open that up. And I'm going to do the same thing in the cyan and just move it a little bit towards there. Great. So now, if you already see off and on, we've already made some good progress. The next thing that I want to do is I'm just going to mess around with this color depth and see what we get from it. So that kind of makes the sky darker, that brightens it. I'm just going to deepen that just a hair um, and maybe a little bit more on this blue towards that teal so I can get that color. Awesome. That's looking good. So the next thing I want to tackle is the grass. So what I'm going to do with the grass, I'm going to give it some saturation. I'm going to move this a little bit right here, move it up, move it up, get it towards the warm colors for green. 
to help to improve that fall look. Um, the other thing I want to do with that is add some more yellow, increase that. Not too much because you can see this is kind of pushing up. But what I like to do is go too far, bring it back a little bit till it looks right to your eye. I think right there looks really good. I'm going to mess with the color depth in that too and just kind of deepen that a little bit. Uh, same thing with the green, deepen that a little bit. And right now, if you just go before or after, we've done a lot. And that's how powerful this tool is. It's also great for skin tones and color. We can go give more saturation to our face if we'd like. Uh, I don't really like what that's doing there. There's a different way to tackle that that we'll talk about next. So the next tool we're gonna look at is the AI Magic Mask 2. And the Magic Mask 2 tool is incredible. Um, so we're gonna go from this to this and we're gonna do it really quickly. So I've created a new node down here and basically what this does is we're gonna to need to turn this all the way off. I always, I click this uh, toggle mask overlay, it's really nice, but I'll turn that off and I'll grab my selection tool right here, add to click, and we're just gonna click on the face to start. Can you see that it grabs the face? We're gonna add the hat. Um, we'll come down here, add her body, and it looks like it did a good job grabbing. One thing I always do is go from faster to better. I just want a better um, mat. It just really helps. It really helps when you, you uh, are looking at hair and things like that, it makes it a lot more detailed. The other thing I like to come down to is the denoise. This denoise tool, bring it up. You can see it start to change the edges a little bit. Um, and this helps with ghosting, honestly, on the edge and also clean black kind of pulls it away from the edge just a bit so you don't get any spill into the other parts of the image or your background from whatever adjustments you end up doing. Especially if you're gonna brighten a subject like we're about to do, you'll see this halo around and we don't want that. Okay, so now that I've got this mat kind of created, um, this mask created, I am going to track this mask front and back. So we go right over here to track. We're gonna let it do its thing. Um, and it goes a lot faster. This whole situation works so much better in DaVinci Resolve 20 than it did in 19. That's why I use it a lot more now. So once our mask is done, um, the rest of the tools here, there's some blur things that kind of work on the edges. Um, I don't want to mess around with anything else at this point. Uh, what I'm going to do now is turn the mat off so we can see our image. And the first thing that I want to do, I know that the skin tones are living in the, you know, kind of your gamma range. So we're going to just push the gamma and try to bring this shot up a little bit and just add a little bit more. It's not really doing too much. So we're probably going to mess around with some of these shadows as well. All right. So if I start touching the lift, I really start seeing my image and her kind of pop out a little bit. And that's where I'm starting to get, let's see before, after, before, after, you know, this is a little bit much but we can dial that back just a little bit so it starts to make sense for our image. And I like that where we're at right there. The other thing I'm gonna do is just come in here to my contrast and just kind of give her a little bit more contrast into this image. Uh, bring this out just a little bit like this. It looks a little bit better, a little bit better. I think there we go before after the magic mask is incredible and you can do this on any subject on items it just works really great so the next one we have is our depth map so depth map allows you to select background or foreground and it allows you to kind of mask that out this is great for situations where there might be a middle ground as well and you can kind of dial in where you want the adjustments to happen in this shot that we have here we have these feet that are kind of in the middle ground and we have a, a foreground that's sand and these the jewelry here but i want to work on the background which is the sky so this is what our before or after will look like as you can see that we're able to kind of boom bring that up real quickly um, so what i'm gonna do is turn that off i'm gonna create a parallel node right here um, and just show you it from the ground up so Depth map lives over here in our node section. So we're just gonna go look for depth map. All right, depth maps here, I'm gonna drag that on. Boom, now we have the depth map. So what's interesting about the depth map, you're immediately gonna see it with the preview on. The preview is basically showing you anything that is black is not gonna be touched. Anything that is white is where our adjustments are gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna invert this because I want 
the sky to be white. So currently the foreground is, you know, not being affected, but everything else is. So we're gonna go into the resulting map adjustment. I'm just gonna click adjust map levels right here. And so this is where we can kind of adjust everything. The far limit is basically all the stuff down that way. Uh, the near limit is where we're having a problem. So we're gonna push that near limit back towards the sky. Oh, and that's starting to look real good right now. All right, back towards the sky. Great. I'm not gonna mess with the gamma too much um, currently. I'm gonna go down here to the isolate specific depth uh, because the thing about this, we're able to kind of affect how much of this adjustment in the background will spill on the foreground. Um, so I'm just gonna mess around the softness. Essentially, if I bring it all the way down here, whatever color I have there will fall onto our subject. Uh, I don't want that too much in this situation. Really where the good stuff happens is in this map finesse. So I'm gonna click post processing and I can start to blur those lines a little bit so that my edges are nice and clean. And the post filter also kind of helps bring that in. You can see your image start to kind of mess up a little bit there. Contract and expand, that's where we're gonna, you can get within the image, uh, within the subject, or it kind of like expands it a little bit. I try to keep that as close to like right on the edge. And once we click this um, preview off and we start making adjustments, so I'm gonna go within this and I'm gonna go over to our handy dandy slice tool and start pumping the sky uh, with some saturation on both sides. And we're gonna move that to teal a little bit as well, just like we were doing before. Um, some more hue. If you can see right now, we've already done a lot, you know, and we started to add some sky in there. Um, I can also bring that down a little bit if we want, um, so it's not so bright out there. Um, and this starts to do a lot more to that color in the background. Actually, that made it too dark. Then we start to see what this can do. Um, if you can see the edges right now, the edges of her legs are kind of something's going on there. So that's where we're gonna mess around with this contract and expand. And if I pull that back, you see the ghosting that starts to happen. So we, we wanna kind of go to the other direction just a little bit. And then um, our blur is really where we kind of um, feathered that in. There we go, that starts to look a lot better right there. Um, before, you know, it's it's a harsh edge. So we want to use that blur to kind of even that out quite a bit. And that helps a lot. Um, the one thing, the caveat to using the depth map, it is really uh, strenuous on your system. So it's going to slow your, your workflow down. It's going to probably be hard to play this back. So one of the things to help with that is go on a, click on the node and come down to node caching, turn it on. And then you can go up here to uh, playback and go down to render cache and you can turn on smart or user and that essentially helps you render just that node so that it'll play back for you um, and it works like a charm. We're gonna go to our last tool and our last tool is new to DaVinci Resolve 20 and it's called the Chroma Warp and it's within the Color Warper section. So we're gonna go down here to the Color Warper section This happens right here um, and this is Chroma Warp. What's really cool about this, you essentially can select a color on your shot and turn it to any other color. So I'm gonna show you right now, there's a couple tools in here you gotta look at. Um, this is uh, your normal mode. Normal mode basically grabs an area and slides everything in that area to the other color. So a lot of things get affected um, based on what you're grabbing, but you can grab multiple colors and do a bunch of different things. But we're gonna go over here to point to point. Point to point mode, lets me select one color and move it to the other color and not, you know, like the whole rainbow sliding all at once. So what I'm gonna do is grab this green. It makes a little dot right here. And let's say we wanna make his jacket blue. So we're gonna bring this over here to blue and it immediately starts working. What's really cool is not only does it work, you know, on this jacket, but his jacket was giving some color onto his hands and his glasses. So we also see that affected, which is really awesome. Uh, I mean, we can bring this to purple. We're gonna get the same kind of thing there. And, you know, when you're moving that far from, you know, green to purple, which is all the way across the color spectrum, it's gonna have some artifacting and, you know, not work as well, depending on how much, you know, what color bit rate you shot the footage in. 
you'll be able to do more with this tool for sure. Uh, but I really like over here to this blue. So let me show you some other tools that you, this thing can do. Obviously you can mess around with the saturation of the color down here. I can darken it, I can brighten it, um, do all those little things there. I can also mess around with the tonal range. So I can bring this down, which kind of takes away the top end of the, um, I'm sorry, the low end of that color. And you can see it in our chroma warp down here is kind of affecting that. Or I can come down here at the high range, it kind of just knocks off the top of it. This essentially is um, bringing down either the low end of the saturation or the high end and kind of meeting it. Um, but yeah, you can do all of that there. I think it looks pretty good when you play it back. It's, it plays really well, which is actually um, very nice with this. So this is one of those tools that I think can really, you know, if you're in a situation where color is just standing out too much and it's kind of bothering the image, you can change it. You can bring it down, just isolate that color and bring down the uh, saturation there with this. Or if you completely need to change the color, this is your tool for that. Honestly, all these tools are super great. I've like really enjoyed, you know, messing around with these. I mean, the, the, the magic mask, the magic mask is honestly just like the best thing ever, especially if you need to, you know, highlight your, your, um, subject and really bring them out of the image. It just does so great. I love it so much. And same thing with, you know, right here, the color slice. I mean, you're just able to do so much with it. It's just very beautiful. Um, plays back like a charm. Like I said, the only thing that you might have a little bit of an issue with is depth map does crush your system. So really make sure you cash it. You'll be doing good. And that's a look at four of the most powerful AI tools in Resolve 20. Color Slice, Depth Map V2, Magic Mask 2, and Chrome Warp. These aren't just minor upgrades. They're serious time savers that give you way more creative control in your grade. If you have found this helpful, drop us a like, hit that subscribe button, and let us know in the comments which tool was your favorite or you're the most excited about, or which one you want us to cover next. More DaVinci tips and filmmaking tutorials coming soon. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.